What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of a Thinking Man's Podcast. If you're listening now, please subscribe to the Muscle Media Network on YouTube. Like the video, leave us a comment, send it to a friend, ring the bell so that you're notified every time we post a video. We're coming at you guys multiple times a week, every week. As always, this episode is brought to you by Kodiak Bodybuilding Apparel, train hard, die strong. Thanks to Chris for supporting the show. This week, I'm rocking the Your Personal Trainer Sucks, my favorite shirt from them. And, I like the, uh, I like the emblem too because it's it, it it represents a certain company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, love it. I get messages every time I wear this. So I think uh, I think this was my it might have been like an exclusive that he sent me, and then he's working on getting it up available on the site. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And uh, today I think we're gonna come at you guys with a little bit of a hybrid episode. We got quite a few submissions in the Facebook group for the Muscle Media Network for physique critiques. We told you guys that if you posted in the group, we would critique your physiques and give you feedback on the show. So we got quite a few and we're going to do a couple today. And then if we have time, I think we're going to do some listener questions as well. Um, So let me pull up the group and see who we're going with. All right. All right, buddy. Cody, Cody Snake. Hopefully I'm saying that right. So Cody is five foot eleven. He weighed in at 165 on stage, open bodybuilder. Uh this took a seven year hiatus, and then now he's back. Um all right, pal. As always, anybody that's listening doesn't realize I'm with my good friend Tommy Styles. Tommy, what do you think? Front lat spread, big frame man. Got a great frame for adding muscle. Um, yeah, obviously, I mean <clears throat> everything's a weak point at five eleven. You're you're the same height as Joe and I. You need a lot of size, buddy. So, um, yeah. but that's the fun part. Um, this this will be a good shot for you as you add muscle though, because it just fits your physique well. You got a tight waist. The quads will, as you add density, they'll flare more. Plenty of room to add inner lat, more delt, more chest. But this is going to be a really good shot as you grow. Yeah, I think one thing too. Um, one one of the comments I I have made on a couple of these guys is that this is what good shape will do for you. I would not have guessed at his height that he was this light, at least in this shot, right? Uh, because he does have the good shape. Um, but like you said, everything is a weak point. That's not a knock. He, it just, he just needs to be way bigger. Like he could be a hundred pounds heavier on stage. Um, yeah. I mean, Hey dude, 10 years ago, I was a middleweight. So I, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. I think it's it, his delt, like everything could be better, but I think his delts do pop in this shot that they're going to be good. Um, and I think his quads are really good. The yeah. because I had it and because I had it removed, I always can pick up on guys with gyno right away. And if you're serious about competing, I would I would get that taken care of. And also just from the shot, I know you're pulling the vacuum, but even so, it looks like there's just a lack of development to the abs because you're really lean. Even with pulling the vacuum, you should still see like a pretty firm outline of the wall of your abs, and and it's pretty washed like pretty non-existent here so i think you know this could be one of those guys that just doesn't train abs so Mm -hmm. i think training them every single guy that's listening to this training your abs will will make you better yep and then for him uh especially seeing this shot you can go up i'm good okay um adductors man obsess on the adductors you know it's not about sweep 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 it's about adductors is going to be able to you can spread those feet further apart. And it's going to give you the illusion that you have better sweep anyway. Cause he, he actually has good flaring quads that are going to continue to flare more, but yep. more adductors and inner leg is where he needs the, the meat of his leg to come up. And like you said, it's a good transition. Cause that is shown here too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think, uh, I think more adduct, I think from the back here, you see more than from the front that you just need more mass on the legs too. I think in the front shot, his legs are probably his best body part. Yeah. Um, this is not like a full-on pose, though. So here, 
with as tall and wide as his frame is, this looks like this shot probably has the most room to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, uh, all all the same things stand. He was in pretty good shape. I think he even probably could have pulled a little bit more, but had some glute lines. Hams are dug out, so good job, man. I know that seven years off from bodybuilding and then deciding to come back that's that's a, a hell of a journey. So I commend you for it. Um, it looks like he could just nail the basics, though. Um, I think this is a guy that shouldn't be afraid to pull from the floor, shouldn't be afraid to do barbell and dumbbell rows. Um, you know, just nail the basics, and it's going to come down to, you know, having to put this much size on, I think it just is going to come down to the fork more than anything. I'm sure most of the guys that listen to this show love to train hard, and then it's really just going to come down to the eating. The eating, and then um, I think guys like you got to, I mean, I did a lot of years of low volume training before my current training, so I'm still an advocate for low volume high high intensity and just getting strong because i think that's how you're going to fill that foundation out before you need to start you know specifying body parts more yeah this shot i think shows the conditioning i think he this yeah. shows that he wasn't in, in really good shape lower back is pretty crisp everything's pretty crisp and his delts like i said kind of in that front lat i think his delts yeah. jump out to me is probably his best body part here quads and delts are very very good uh, body parts for him. Those rear delts are definitely advanced for yeah everything uh, everything else. It almost makes me wonder if if a lot of the the upper back stuff that he's trying to do winds up just being more rear delt than anything else. I think that's how mine got developed for a while. Yeah, yeah, which isn't a bad thing. You know, it's it's an asset to have. Rear delts is almost like one of those exotic body parts to have that it, it makes a huge difference when you have them. So now it's just a matter of learning how to train his back and filling that in. Um, and his arms have a good look to them. They need to be bigger, but knowing that once he's in shape, they have this kind of separation to them is a, is a pretty cool look also. Side chest. I think this is like, especially when you turn to the side, being this tall, this kind of exposes him for, for how thin that he is. Yeah. Yeah. The side shots when you're tall, take the longest to, uh, to fill out the leg is is pretty evenly developed i think he could probably sit on this a little bit more and there might be some more hand drop there um but yeah i think and and seeing it too like he's got good insertions for everything i, I don't think that there's like i wouldn't look at this and say that he has poor genetics in terms of like insertions or shape um i think it's truly just a matter of like a lot of training even more food and uh, for him, this is this would be one of the candidates I think that should take like an extended off season and really yeah, like even if it means you're you're soft, like try to put a hundred pounds on in the next eighteen months. You know that that might be overzealous, but like you have to just walk around way bigger than you've ever been before. June of two thousand twenty five should be your next show. Yep, I think that's a good target. And yeah, pretty much as a, as a as a light heavyweight. Yeah, yeah, I would say much much of the same here. This That'll is a good, a good shot. Yeah, this is a really good shot. Well, that's where you kind of see the gyno exposed, though. But yeah, yeah, and I think kind of a lack of ab development again here too, because he's got the fat off. Yeah, quads look awesome though. Those quads are that's your money shot, man. Yeah, yeah, that's cool to see. Good uh, obliques, serratus is lined out. Yeah. On both sides, too. That's a good shot. Yeah. And then yeah. another shot that shows the frame. 50 um, more pounds of muscle, dude. That'll be a money shot to close close a, yeah. a closing yeah. round with. Yeah. Yeah, I think all the tools are there, man. I think, too, like, you know, taking as much time off as you did, you're going to have to try to try to make up some ground by spending – more time than the average competitor would in the off season. Like, you know, don't be one of these guys that gets caught in the trap of competing every year. Just spend some time away, wear hoodies to the gym, walk around in hoodies, walk around a little chubby and, and just get really big and really heavy. And like you said, Tommy, really strong at some of the main movements. Uh, he's got a couple of comparisons here. Like 
Yeah, like I mean, if he was a, a middleweight, like this is what these guys like this is a good, pretty good middleweight here. And you just see the the difference with how tall he is. Again, the delts are good in that you front. Think this relax. is the overall. Did he win his class? Oh, he might have won his class. Just gusting by the heights of all these guys. Like that guy yeah. looks like super on the far right. Or a heavyweight, maybe. Yeah, this guy probably was a light heavy. Oh, you're right. It probably is. Yeah. Yeah. So this guy's good. All right. Yeah. Much of, I think it's probably much of the same feedback here in these shots. So um, thanks for the submission, man. And like we said, really good tools to work with. And now it's just a matter of like living like an off season bodybuilder for a while. Eat, sleep, train, bro. All right. So that was Cody. All right. So next we got Michael. I'm not even going to try that last name. Sorry, buddy. I just don't want to butcher it. Cat, Cat Renack. Cat Renack. Five foot ten, about two hundred and thirty pounds. I'm assuming that's his weight here at uh, ten weeks post show. He won Class C in Classic, but lost the overall six weeks into a hold phase. So that means he's probably not on much gear. Um, goal, he wants to be ahead. I would agree, man. I see this. I saw your photos really even before reading the caption, and I thought you should be a, a bodybuilder more than you should be in considering Classic. This is an awesome shot, and you do. And being as far post show as you are, I think you did a really good job, like holding it all together. Especially being off gear for a bit, um, this looks like a really good rebound and just good execution post show. In terms of the physique, what do you see here, Tommy? Yeah, I know Mike. He's uh, he is out here in Arizona with me, so um, we've met. We trained. We trained at the same gym for a while. Um, hmm. Good physique uh good good structure i mean got a good yeah obviously he needs to be a mm, i would say a super long term but yeah. you know a heavy is the next step uh, i don't know what his stage weight was but um i mean this shot i mean the front relax is the first one they see so this is a, a shot that just needs more muscle but he's got the tools as far as the structure um good delt to dealt with yeah. i would say chest density and adductors yeah. probably a good focus point. The chest was the first one that I saw too. Yeah, that's a yeah. lot of us that are that are five eleven white boys. Unless we're you're genetically blessed with a chest, like yeah. I can guarantee most of us need chest. Yeah, yeah, same here. Um, and I, I I'm harping on it, but I think he's I think I agree. Like, would we all want to be super heavyweights? Of course. I think he has the shape though. He's another example that. Um, having the shape that he does, if he was peeled at 220, I think he'd probably be in the mix at a at a pro qualifier. Um, quads are awesome. The overall structure is really good. His lats slash terries from the front are good. I think he could probably like internally rotate this upper arm here to just show some of the arm more. But overall, that's a good shot. Rear relax. What do you think? What jumps out at you? His delts back are crazy. Thickness. Yeah, good delts back thickness. Yeah. Um, uh, probably. I mean, he's rebound here, so everything's fuller. But yeah, I would guess that lower leg development probably needs to come up with hamstrings yeah. and glutes. Agreed. Um, I think a little more on the arms would be nice. Same thing I need to as a as a taller guy from the back. Yeah. Yeah, like the delts are so overpowering that it makes his arms look a little thin. I think posing wise, again, he could probably just turn them in and pop this tricep up in the air a little bit more. But I'm with you. I think from this shot, at least the lower body is what jumps out at me because this looks great. Good quarter turn, too. He's really balanced. Yeah. Like, Jen, as a general theme, he's pretty balanced. There's not really gaping uh, holes. Yeah, he's, I mean, just more awesome. mass here. Yeah, just bigger. Head to toe, but good structure. This is a good shot for him, too. Awesome shot. The only thing that jumps out at me is the arms. Arms can come up. Um, chest, too, but. Chest, and then I think uh, just more inner leg and adductor will really solidify that bottom half. Yep. 
And probably this, I mean, density on the quads will help too. Yeah, it can't hurt. And I think his quads, like, you know, I, you, I remember you saying this to me, like his quads from the front, especially I think are his best body part, but that doesn't mean like that they can't come up, like turn them into a wild strength where it just jumps out at the, the judges when you, when you come out. I mean, Tyler Mannion did a video the other day where he said they're pretty much judging the quarter turns and then the front double that those are weighed heavier than any of them. And this guy looks great in all those shots. So yeah, they said the, the quarters, the front double, and the back double the are back the double. poses yeah. that will determine if you're in the first call up. Yeah. And then once you're there, it, the rest of them come into play. But yeah. those six are what, you know. Do you know how he trains? Uh, currently like no, but or... I don't know what he does. I think he's somewhat similar to how I've trained. Uh, I'm not sure what he's doing currently. but Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering. It just looks like a lot of us, like tall white guys, that could probably benefit from just like higher volumes with the arms, like just trying to volumize the arms. Yeah, I mean, by the time this podcast comes out, you guys will have heard the Ronald Poe Synthol podcast on For the Love of the Game. So put that one in your toolbox too. This is another good shot. His, his, his structure and his shape really comes through. It, just as a note to whoever uh, whoever Mike is working with as a coach, Mike, you do them a big favor by getting a better photo setup. These shadows are are not great. Um, they're kind of hiding your one of your best features, like the structure of of the lats in the in the front shots. Um, but this is really good, really balanced much of the same stuff. I think the big one that jumps out to me in this shot, at least like we've already talked about is just the chest thickness. He's got like the look at where the front delt start or ends and where the, where this chest, like where each the, the space that each pet covers, he's got the space to have a big chest. So now it's just a matter of filling it in. This is good too. I feel like I've said this about all the shots, but this is good too. More, yeah, tricep, exactly. more tricep and more rear delt, I think. Yeah, some more, more chest thickness. The side leg is pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. I would just keep making it stronger. Yeah, really good. That, that hand drop nasty. One thing I've noticed in all this, your calves are pretty far behind. Most yeah. of us have that problem. So yeah, obsessed on calves the, the, the rest of the way too. He does a good job posing too. He's yeah, obviously like a, a competitor that takes it seriously. I like this. This variation doesn't look great on a lot of people, especially being a little bit taller. Like I feel like I personally looked a little thin when I try this variation, but this looks good on him, especially he's got good a good midsection. And I like this variation for him because it does thicken up the arm and the and the delt for him a little bit. Yeah, I think he'd have to be a real true upper end heavy or super to pull this off, diet it down. Yeah, but um, it, it you know he's got a tight waist and he's got the the structure. I'm sure that other. I'm sure the more traditional variation looks good though, because he, like you said, he does have that good side. That's why I said I would. I would yeah. stick with that. I tried this in the off. The only reason I started trying is because I could not get my fat ass into a <laughs> into it. So I once know. I was, you know, lost some weight, that was easier. And it, it, the side try with a bent leg is best for me. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that actually wound up being one of your best shots. If this if there's a pose we have to critique the most, I'd say this is probably his most shallow pose. Agreed. He's got good delts, good upper traps. Yeah. And then it, there's like there's up here is like, really good, and all this right is below good. those upper traps is not a lot of density, not a lot of lat thickness or width. So I would really yeah. focus on that. Yeah. Even I'm the sure tie is down. That's it's really shallow on stage. Yeah. And then the arms. I think this is maybe the where they look the worst. They're, they're just like flat across both the tries and the buys. Um, yeah, I mean, shocking, but I'm going to say, I think just pulling from the floor would probably be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, this is good. I think I feel like we've said that his delts look good in most of the shots. This one, I think that it just shows you that because of his clavicle width and already the the height of his traps, he still could. There's still more room to go with this. Yeah, and that's just the curse of being tall, man. The the frame yeah. really it could always use more. It's just a long term project. It's a it's a blessing and a curse. It's a it's a curse for the first. I don't know, probably 10 or 15 years of your career. And then once it's filled out, it looks super imposing and impressive, but it just, it's a way, way longer project. All right. Thanks for the submission, Mike. Awesome, awesome physique, man. Excited to see you attack this transition into open bodybuilding because I think that's where you belong. All right, and then we got Cody Larson, friend of the show. He's yeah. an uh, OG like follower and uh in the in the group he's he's posted before, so let's let's dive into this. So uh Cody is 5'9 or 5'10, sitting like 207 to 210, uh 30 years old, never been on stage, and he is working with our good friend Tommy Styles. Tommy, you want to go first? This is your guy. Nah, I critique him every week. Let okay. Me, let me you. Okay. All right. So I had I have to say, like, um, I went back because I I knew that Cody had posted and that we were probably going to get to this. Um, you know, there there's plenty of good that we're going to call out, but I also like, you know, the guys that are doing this. I don't think they're doing this just to get a pat on the back. So. Cody, I have to say, man, you posted in the group. I went back and looked in February, you posted and you're weighing the same weight. You were as ripped and shredded as you are. And working with Tommy, I know that the goal could not have possibly have been to maintain a ripped glute look for six months as just a walking around standard. Um, and in your post, you had mentioned that you need to get better at doing what needs to be done and not what you want to do. And you talked about an emotional attachment to cardio, excessively high volumes, not being able to take time away from the gym, all these things. I looked through these pictures and I just feel like it's very obvious that none of those things have really improved. Like you're lean and shredded, but it looks like you just live in a state of fatigue. Like this looks like a body that's so worn down. Um, and it and it must be. I mean, you've walked around like stage shredded for half a year at this point. I, I can't imagine that that was um, very productive. Like uh, your hormonal health is probably not great. And I would just imagine like from a mental standpoint, I know how I feel when I look this lean and it's miserable for everyone involved, for anyone that I come in contact with. So I can't imagine that it's very fun to live like this. So I would say generally you probably just, and I know Tommy, you're, you're probably doing these things or trying to, trying to implement that plan, but you know, knowing how much he puts into this, I would just say like from a mental aspect, you got to allow yourself to get heavy. He had um, posted actually this, this caught my eye. Um, he posted and Rome, Roman had called out getting the gyno fix. And he said, um, good, good amount of man boob left from being a, a former 300 pound fat kid. I have to wonder then is, is there just like a fat phobic, um, mindset that's stuck in there where he's just afraid to get anything outside of shredded. But if, you know, if bodybuilding is the goal and like you want to get big, like you, the weight has to go up, man. You cannot just hold your same body weight and conditioning for six months at a time. Um, and so now that I, now that I did all that, we could, we could critique the physique itself. Um, he just needs to be bigger. And that was like kind of the whole point of why I mentioned all the things that I did, like not gaining any weight in six months. It kind of just feels like wasted time. Yeah, and I mean, in some context, I mean, because I think this is a good talking, like, he's a guy who works on the production line at John Deere. Um, mm -hmm. So, 
there's no way for him to get less than like 18,000 steps a day when he's at work, probably more. I mean, I, I don't even have him track anymore. Cause like, I don't want to know. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, man. But when you have guys like that or, or like postal service workers who work, you know, mailbox to mail, like, and this is just a round table, like, how much weight gain can we expect from those guys when it's like your yeah. norm for movement is like, you know, my three days, right? My four that's days. A, fuck. That's one of those things. I have a couple of guys that are super high output too. And I, I say this phrase a lot, but when the physical stress of weight training is not the only or not the biggest stressor in your life, it's just going to make all of this very, very difficult. Um, like these guys like this, I feel like you just have to, you almost have to do the bare minimum in terms of what you're doing in the gym, like three oh, days yeah. through training three days. And like he, I, I pointed, I pointed out his previous post because he talked about how he loves, he even mentioned, I think called himself out and said that he loves like excessively high volume. Um, yeah, just, Cody was when he came to me was doing like 35 to 40 sets, intensifiers, six days a week, 35,000 steps a day, hit cardio. And I yeah. Cody, I'm not I'm not bashing you. I'm just calling it like it is. Like, yeah. So we we've reduced a lot of that. You know, he has four yeah. cardio sessions on the elliptical, steady state. We're not a lot, we're not pushing the heart. Like, this is a guy who just enjoys the suffering of hard stuff. It's, to the point where it's no longer, I mean, we talk a lot about that, of like training hard, training like a psycho savage, all the words I've used. But at some point, there's a line where it's like, are you suffering just because you have a, a infatuation with suffering? And that I think we're there. We're not actually, yeah. we're not actually just training hard to put on muscle. We're just, we're just create, we're, it's self mutilation in, in a, in a <laughs> certain aspect. Yeah. And those are the guys. So like, yeah, we, we talk about, you know, training like a savage, you know, being the, the hardest worker in the gym every day, like all this stuff to try to get the general message across to the majority of people that are going to listen to this, because maybe they don't have somebody telling them to do that, or they haven't seen somebody do that up close. But then in the, in like the, this is usually this, somebody like this is more so like the exception than the rule this is almost somebody that needs to dial that type of like sadistic mindset back. Like, like we know that you can take it there. We, we see it. Um, so then it's just about being like more thoughtful of when you can do that. And then um, man, like this is a guy I'm sure you're, you're doing everything that you can, but this is like somebody like this, like you couldn't possibly stick enough food on this guy. No, I mean, he's, I'm forcing him to have free meals. That yeah. Yeah. the the food is up yeah i mean gear's not low it's it's all there it just we just yeah. have to tie it all together and um you know i think reducing training days is, is the next step um yeah moving it down to just four per week and that's that's a lot of what i did when i was a firefighter i never trained more than four days a week and there was an off week yeah. where i would only train three days based off my fire schedule yeah that's what i had to do to like and I'm a hard gainer, but yeah, that's what I had to do to gain weight and progress and be able to, you know, to be a bodybuilder. Because at the end of the day, bodybuilding, you're building your body up. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we could break down the physique, but at this point, it's like everything needs to come up because you are 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, I mean, there is some good, you can, you can see conditioning won't be an issue when it's time to show that, but right. Um, right. It's it's not the time when you're, you know, not competing till 2024. Yeah, like this is not this is again like he is so much more the exception than the rule. Like usually, if if you just showed me this guy and there was no, you know, you or you know somebody posts their physique up and they post up an off season physique, one of the things about being a competitive bodybuilder is like, well, is this person willing to do what it takes to get in shape? That's not a question with this guy. Now it's like you know he called himself out about the ability to do what's needed and not what he wants to do. What's needed right now is he needs to live like an off-season bodybuilder. Like 
be okay. Man, like, and like the thing is, if if he's going to listen to this or anybody, I, I have guys like this that have previously been heavy and then they struggle with the idea of, of putting weight on. Like there are different degrees of body fat and of being fat. Like at no point is this guy ever just going to wake up and be that 300 pound sloppy fat kid again. Like you could drive him all the way up on a weekly basis to 300 pounds. It might not be pretty, but just as an extreme example, it's going to look way better than it did the last time he was 300 pounds. So like, you know, you're going to have to get to 250, 260, 270, dude. Like you, you're going to have to walk around like, you know, not super clear, visible abs after you've had a couple of meals and a gallon of water. Like, you know, this is, uh, if, you know, seeing, I, re I remember seeing his pictures in February and just thinking to myself, like, man, this is totally unsustainable. And then here he is six months later at like the same body weight and conditioning level. Um, so it's just, it, I, I think that he needs to be okay to accept like these little bumps in body weight and, and body fat. And when I say little, I mean, for him, I, he, he could be well served if like he had a three week stretch where he gained 20 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's an ongoing process. Um, you know, hard work. It's not, a, it's not a matter of work ethic. It's just a matter of no, definitely um, not. He's working too hard, <laughs> you know, doing like, like he called himself on it, like doing, you know, and I had to do the same thing in 2022. Like the way I was training was getting me injuries. I got it by partial yeah. patellar tendon tear. It was like, you either adapt and continue bodybuilding or you just keep doing what you're doing. Eventually it's your body will say it's over, but this is, I can kind of use this now because I'm trying to describe lately how I'm going about my training versus because I get these messages like it's and this is how this is what I hate about Instagram is it has to be either or like now that I'm doing more volume I I, I have to like swear off low volume and you're a high volume guy yeah I still love low volume I, I may go back to it at some point it's yeah. just not what I'm doing currently um so my way of training in the past is like imagine you're hammering a nail into the piece into a piece of wood. Every fucking rep that I hammered back in the in, the, in those days was like wham, a big wham, swing, yeah. wham. Might have missed the nail perfectly a couple of times, but that nail's going through the fucking wood. That's failure. Now I'm trying to rhythmically put each stroke into that nail perfectly, just like the last one. Boom, 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 boom. And then once the nail is flush with the wood. I don't hit it again and make sure it splinters the wood. That's that's past my failure point. But that's how I'm able to do quadruple the volume I ever did because I'm not driving myself into the dirt. And and I had the same thing. I had the infatuation of like, I need to deadlift until I feel like I'm, I'm going to blow a disc or I need to do something until I can't move anymore. Yeah, And that worked for a period of time and then it started not working. So you have to adapt if you're, and my goal is bodybuilding. His goal is bodybuilding. So what you're doing is keeping you here on the mountain. If you want to keep climbing, you have to let go and just keep and go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, man, like, like go look at any of the, I'm assuming like he knows bodybuilding. He's a bodybuilding fan. He watches the show. He comments about, you know, when we do show predictions and stuff, um, man, go look at any of your favorite bodybuilders over time. Like they got blown out huge and heavy in the off season by eating just a fuck ton of food. Like go look at Jay Cutler in the off season. Like he was a fat fuck most of the time. Like Jay's DVDs are amazing because if you watch them, he will eat a meal and then start starts prepping yeah. the next meal. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was eating every 90 minutes when he's eating 12 meals a day. Like you're just a production line of food at that point. Granted, Co I mean, Cody's not going to jump into 12 meals a day, but like, that's the idea. And he does eat a lot of food. I, I know he yeah. still has, he has a good appetite. He gets his food down because obviously he didn't, you know, he was a, a big dude before. So eating's not a problem. Yeah. It's just a matter of. It's more of the mindset, I think, than anything of being, of being able to let yourself go there. Like have a little, you know, especially like he hired you, Tommy, like, I almost want to tell him to have a little faith in you. Like you're not going to just let him wake up one day and be 
like morbidly obese again like there's gonna be it's gonna come in waves like he could he could have three or four three or four of these like waves where you're adding body weight and body fat and look up four waves from now and be like i'm 240 and this is still acceptable condition i still have faint lines in my glutes like he's it's it's gonna take 40 or 50 pounds for this lower back and for these glutes to not have lines in it. Well, I think another point that a lot of people, certain people can probably take out is like, if you're working with a coach and they tell you say Friday night, have a free meal. That is part of the plan. You're not right. eating off plan at that point. Right. If you decide and elect to give yourself a free meal on Saturday and Sunday, like now you've off plan eight, you've deviated. Right. But if you're, coach tells you to eat one free meal a week, two free meals, free meal, whatever that's on plan. That means remove the notion that you're doing something you're not supposed to do. You're actually, if you don't have that meal, then you're, you're then you're off plan. You're that it's, and I think there are people who might be similar to him of who used to be fat and who, who almost have a bad relationship with food. Now it's like, well, if I don't eat this exact grams, then I'm, I'm being a bad person it's like no right. food is our tool we use no, that it. should be that should be non-negotiable like the same way you know a, a guy like this would never dream of missing a meal or missing a workout when you say go have a fucking burger and fries and a piece of cake like that's non-negotiable that's part of this plan and if you don't follow that you're not following my entire recipe and what is the point of paying me then like you hired me mm-hmm. for a reason so uh hopefully this was productive i i I kind of feel like now we just kind of hammered him, but this all I comes we, from we used, a, we used we used it to provide value to others yeah. listening. But you know, yeah. ultimately, I think Cody's got a lot of David Goggins in him, and I think he could yeah. like step it back and like apply more of that towards like actual bodybuilding. Yeah, all right. Like, that's like you Jake. said. That's what we're. That's what the goal is. Like he have loves bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah, like he loves bodybuilding. So grow, like build your body up, man. It, it takes like putting this body weight on and and getting outside of this crazy level of like just walking around conditioning. Um, and it's and we're doing this because, like I said, he is a friend of the show. We know that he he follows along, he comments, like he loves bodybuilding. I said the things that I said because I see that here he is six months later, still pre- like presumably kind of in the same mindset. And I, and I don't want that to continue. I want him to go on to make progress. He's in a great spot to have a crazy rebound from. Like I look at this and he could, he could gain 50 pounds and not be anywhere near fat. And he's going to look big then, you know, like he, he looks kind of just inflamed and withered right now. Yeah. I mean, I know what it's, I just came out of having skin texture like that on my quads. Right. And I know how I felt. Right. Like, that's what I was saying. Yeah. I couldn't sit on a hard surface for like right. an hour without like my, right. yeah, being being irritated by it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and there and there is there there is things about this physique, like his quads are awesome. Um that back double is gonna be an awesome shot. Yeah. He just he just needs to walk around like we you know the I think the first guy that we talked about like he needs to just spend a year walking around as a way heavier human being than what he is right now. Um, but all right, I think that was a good little critique segment. You got a couple of questions that we want to run to kind of fill an hour. Yeah. Um, I got a couple too. Let me see what we got. All right. This is actually a good one because we have a lot of varying degrees of, uh, I guess, time served with training that listen to the show. So does training at an elite level ever catch up to you? Injuries, et cetera. If so, what do you do to combat this? Um, do you feel like we're, are we at it? I don't feel like we're at an elite level. What does he mean by that? And I would never call myself elite, but I believe the no. guy the guy that asked it is like a client. So he obviously views me as elite based off how I train. But I think we're qual. I mean, I've been training with weights for 20 years. Okay. I see what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I treat like an advanced as, as an advanced trainee. Okay. Yeah. Basically, is- 
if you're someone who calls it training, you probably, it means something to you versus working out. So what was the question? Is there a co- uh, like a cost of doing business? Yeah. Are, you, uh, are there injuries, wear and tear? If so, uh, what do you do to combat this? Uh, what do you do to combat it? Well, the first, the, the answer to the first question is yes. I live with the ramifications of my training on a daily basis from the moment that I wake up every day. Uh, my joints and some tendons in certain areas feel as though they have the mileage on them of a 60 year old man. And I'm 31. Um, and then even just like acutely on a day to day basis, week to week basis, I walk around, even when I'm in a huge calorie surplus, plenty of body fat, plenty of drugs. I walk around in just a pretty chronically fatigued place where it affects like my day-to-day stuff. I don't move around like the normal person does. Um, What do I do to combat this? Just accept it, I guess. I mean, like there are certain things like I've gotten huge into like pre-training mobility work and that has definitely helped really more so than anything else. I, I I would say like pre-training, like prehab and mobility work and how I actually train with weights, like putting a lot of thought into that and how my body moves has been the most beneficial thing more than any of these like external recovery modalities, like more so than body work, more so than chiropractic, more so than uh, fucking cold plunge or any of this other shit, like just working on how my body moves has been the biggest thing for me. Um, it, it might be controversial in our space. And I know there there's people that swear by it and love it. I have, I do not get massage work done. I think it's temporary. I think the benefit is mostly like a social, like relaxation standpoint at this point like if you continue to move the way that you always have you're always going to have the problems that you've always had so i think looking at how you're moving more so than anything else is going to be the biggest thing yeah i'm in agreement there um short answer is yes um you know it's same as a as a person who does manual labor their whole life they've They've, yeah. they've accrued some bodily damage by the end of their career, by the end of their, the reign. I mean, my dad was a trim carpenter for 30, 40 years and he's more beat up than, I mean, I'm on that path and we, I don't do manual labor. So let, let's <laughs> just put it that way. So, yeah. um, you know, yeah, I mean like real quick, look at Ronnie, you know, like yeah. you want to talk about training at an elite level. We don't, well, that's the most elite human that we've ever had in this space and he can't walk. There is an inherent risk from uh, even if you do everything you can to mitigate that risk. I mean, yeah, if you're putting 400, 500 pounds on your back, that's the human body wasn't meant to do that for a whole span of years. It can. And that's what is awesome. What human performance is very, very fascinating. But um, it, it there is a it's the mileage, not the years is what a lot of older guys have said to me over the years. And. Yeah. I think as I've entered my thirties and I'm moving on, I definitely uh, agree with that, especially now because, you know, I train with a kid who's 22 and he just has a motor that doesn't just stop buries but, you every day. <laughs> um, yeah. What do you do to, you know, I think you got to take care of your joints. So what you said about joint mobility prehab um, we've had a couple guys on the show, Matt Crispin and Nick yeah. Chan, Crispin yeah. and Nick Chan, who, have gone over the importance of uh, FRC, um, functional range conditioning, uh, cars, controlled articulated rotations. Yes. You know, you Those only get one set of joints and unless you want to have joint replacement surgeries, which doesn't sound fun. So I'm going to um, do what I can to take care of my joints while I'm bodybuilding and then long after. Um, Cause I've, I've seen what people who get knee replacements and hip replacements like, I'm not into that. That doesn't look fun to me. So I also think taking a joint support supplement is a insurance policy to there's a lot of, you know, Leviathan has one. I'll plug that. A lot of ingredients, a lot of studies have went into that. Dante Trudell got me, you know, married to the idea of taking a joint support supplement and he's almost 60 and still trains the same way he did when he was like 
fully, you know, 285. So right. I think there's a lot to be said about you get what you put into your body. You think about it like if you want a car to last 20 years, you got to take good care of it. Same with your body. Um, so yeah. I do, I don't do traditional massage. I think that's silly for advanced level of people with muscle. Um, I do have a great team of people out here with, you know, physical therapists I've worked with for four years, dry needling. Um, and then I have a current um, person who does my, call it body work. I mean, she uses the new fit and different technology to, you know, I'm not going to, that's a whole another episode, but yeah, I do use body work and I'm pretty, I'm very, very consistent with it. Um, I think most people can start by, you know, marrying themselves to doing things on their own and moving your own body. Um, and stabilizing your own body as well. If there's something wrong, don't delay, go spend the money and get it looked at and fixed there. There's experts in those body work fields for a reason. You just like feeling something off and then hoping it goes away by the next workout. That's that could be a recipe for disaster at some point. You never know. I mean, maybe, maybe nine times out of 10, you're good. Maybe that one out of 10 time though, you go to squat after something didn't feel good and boom, there goes a disc. Uh, yeah. Not worth it. Not worth saving, you know, 70, 80, 90 bucks or the time to go through it. Um, I wouldn't have as much knowledge of my own body and training without my body work people over the years. And I can put that into my coaching. Uh, when I, when I watch other people train, I'm like, Oh, you look like you had the same problem I had in 2018. This is what I did. You might want to consider it. Um, yeah. but yeah, short answer is yes. Like I, and that's where I have a hard time with this whole fatigue management is like, how do you train balls to the wall four to five days a week, every week, and not be in some sort of fatigue? Like I train legs on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, my legs are very, very sore to the point I have to think about how I'm going to pick something up off the ground. Wednesday, I'm starting to feel better. Thursday, I could train again if I had to, but I don't train till Saturday. Friday, I have anxiety about training on Saturday. Saturday, I get to train and then we start over. Like that's every week. Yeah. So yeah, there's going to be, there's, there's wear and tear that comes with uh, forcing human tissue onto your frame. Yep. Well said. Do you, have, do you have another one that you want to do like a deep dive on? I got some pretty shallow questions. I got a good one that All right. is perfect for you in this moment. Tips for getting food down in the off season. Because you're in the thick of it. I have started telling myself some wild shit if I don't get this food down. Lay it on me. Don't fucking hold back. Um, man. Your mother isn't going to live to see you at your next show. Um, your dog is going to die. Your girlfriend is going to fuck the person that you hate the most. Um, just crazy shit. Cause some of the basics haven't, haven't been able to do it. Like the meal six Olympics are pretty serious at this point. It's usually, I'm usually getting meal six down at like two in the morning. And, uh, I honestly have to charge myself up to get that, to eat that meal more than I have to, I want to, I'm more willing to do like my brutal top sets of legs or RDLs than I am to get this food down. So really it's just whatever you have to tell yourself. I look at pictures of myself on, I have like certain pictures and little video clips of me, like visibly disappointed walking off stage the last time that I was on stage that I look at and put myself in that place of what I was feeling. Um, but it, it's been some pretty dark stuff lately. Yeah. And that's anybody who has been in the trenches of eating food that they don't remotely even want to eat can relate. Like I can, I, I call it the last meal Olympics. I'll yeah. find myself there probably by Halloween and I'll spend an entire fucking eight, eight, nine months there. But I know that's what's necessary. Um, now, if we want to get into basic tips, I mean, meal timing is huge. I think you can't, at a certain point, calorically, you can't jam your meals too close together. You got to give yourself enough. You got to get up earlier, get that first meal down and out of the way so you can space your meals out. The whole yeah. every, eat every two hours doesn't work when you're eating quantum amounts of food. So 
try to set yourself up to where you can give yourself three, three and a half hours. Um, chew your food. I have a problem with that because I shovel, but a trick I do to get like a, a whole Tupperware of food down is I put as much food in my mouth as I can. Be, like, I feel like I'm going to, you know, asphyxiate. And then I just sit there and I chew it and I rock as I chew. And then I go back in. It's like, man, six, seven, eight rounds. It's like intervals on the bike, but it's mm. just with food. I can put down a lot of chicken and rice with that method and beef and rice, whatever. But um digestion's huge you know there's a that's a whole other podcast about things you can do take care of your digestion your gut health you're probably going to have to spend some money on supplements to i mean we're talking five thousand six thousand seven thousand plus calories a day to put on muscle um at, at that point you can't just you know wake up you know, unless you're blessed but i have to like take all the measures i can um don't drink water or like I cut my water before and after the meal and I, you know, I'll use some small sips while I'm eating if food gets stuck. Yeah. Um, but you don't want to be drinking a shit ton and then eat a meal because you've uh, saturated or washed out the digestive enzymes. Um, you know, staying active, don't be a slug, even though it's, it's tempting to just to go sit down or lay down after eating a big meal, you know, maybe do some house chores or go for a walk. Um, you know, those are basic tips I can give you. But at the end of the day, when we're talking force feeding, it's it's all mental fortitude. You either want it or you don't. And uh, that's where the the self, the inner bitch is going to tell you like, hey, you don't need to eat this. Go like, go to bed. And that's where you have to go. No, I want the results of getting this meal down over and over and over and over. And that's how you do it. It almost feels a little silly, but sometimes I like talk to that voice and I will try to tell I will tell my inner bitch voice like I'm the fucking boss. It sounds silly. It sounds gay, or maybe I guess, I guess shouldn't say that, but uh, it sounds silly saying that out loud. Um, but I'm just like I'm the boss. Like this is happening, whether my physical body wants it to happen or not. This is happening because I call the fucking shots. Um, if you have a dog or if you have pets, go hang out with them. Go bring them outside real quick after you eat. That will give you that will probably set you up to be able to get the next one down a little bit easier um like you said i think making sure that you are mindful of the clock like 30 to 40 minutes before you're set to eat cut your fluids um and i really i i try to just stick to water i know people love like diet drinks but for me i just there's such a thin margin for error when you're eating this much food with my gut that I don't bring any of that extra shit in like a diet soda and it making me burpy or have hiccups or any like I can't afford that and it set me back an hour so I just stick with water um but like you said there are times where um you know I I get like in I get like very ridiculous bouts of hiccups to where it will cause me throwing up an entire meal so in those moments if i'm eating and it 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 is usually because some food got stuck and i'll start getting some hiccups and it wants to it wants to make the entire meal come up so i will use a couple sips of water and try to like forcefully swallow to shove it down um it's scary because i know that's how dusty had his incident and i think about it every time i do it but the big one, if you are doing that, like you said, is to make sure you're thoroughly chewing your food. I've always kind of skipped out on doing that. And um, it does your, it does make a big difference. So your meat, put your meat into really small pieces, like overly small. Like, oh, that's, like feed it to a bird. I'm guilty of like taking a big piece of steak and cutting it into like four bites. And then I'm just like, oh, really? Like I'm eating an animal on the side of the road. Like I used to until Dusty's yeah. thing. And now I like, yeah. I put it into like fucking pebbles. I was going to say, I do that. That is part of my meal preparation. I don't have to prep six right, meals. Chicken. I don't have to prep six meals in advance because of the, my life now, like working from home. Um, but like preparing each meal as I'm about to eat it, I use scissors and just cut everything very, very small. Um, and then with the, you know, you mix it in with the rice, I use a, a spoon, like you said, and it kind of just creates like a shovel effect, but really if you're like, you know, especially living through the last like two plus year of an off season that I have, 
you know, you get messages from clients or, or not even so much like my clients, because the guys that I work with are, are pretty serious in terms of their desire, but like seeing people, you know, write about their own experience online being like, you know, I just couldn't get this food down. So I skipped a meal or I pulled back and, and, you know, went to a mini cut or something. And it's like, you know, after the last two plus years that I've had, I just can't relate. Like that just tells me that you don't want it. There has like, it just has to go down. Like if, if you really wanted it, you would just find a way like it's, and if anyone outside of bodybuilding heard you saying like, man, like I, I really wanted this and like, I signed up for this and put all this time, money and effort into doing this. And then the thing that held me back was like, just putting the food in my mouth and eating it. Like people would look at you like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, what do you mean that you didn't get the food down? Like, of course they don't understand the context, but it really isn't all that hard. Like every time that I've finished one of these, you know, just insufferable meal sixes afterwards, I'm like, man, that wasn't even that bad after the fact. Yeah. That's I was just going to touch on perspective, man. I mean, yeah. I've had periods of time where, because I lived in the state of like, I hate eating. I carried that over into my eating, but now I'm like, I, I need to do this because this is the bridge I have to walk to get more muscle. And I yeah. want more muscle. I yeah. just stood the second call out in Las Vegas yeah. four weeks ago, five weeks ago, because I don't have enough muscle. And that I just mean like, you haven't eaten I can, enough I can food. Hold those images in my head. Like I remember being in the second call out and seeing Turner in the crowd. And I was like, fuck. I don't want to be in the second call out being able to see my buddy in the crowd. I want to be on the fucking line on the first call out and hear him, not see him because I have time to like look around. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. the, you, you got to get a little sadistic with it. I mean, again, we're talking about forcing tissue onto your frame, forcing tissue onto your frame. It's not normal. It's not just like a eat when you're hungry. That's why setting time, using the phone timer, set timers. If you're yeah. someone, you can't rely on hunger. I can't rely on hunger because I'm not hungry and I have work to do. So I get stuck in my work. Like you could look Bro, up. Could you imagine out. relying on hunger at this point? I wouldn't eat. I wouldn't eat for three days. I'd fast. <laughs> uh, but but that literally, that's a great perspective because it's literally like, think like we've talked about it on this show, but like eating, especially when we're talking about like, like proteins, like that's just taking the dead muscle of an animal and then eating it to try to pack it on ourselves. Like that bowl of food sitting in front of you is literally a bowl of muscle. So you can either eat it or you cannot, but somebody's going to eat it. And if you're a competitor, somebody that you're going to stand next to ate every single bowl of that food. Yeah. And I, I mean, the dialogue is huge when I'm prepping food, I I'm talking to myself either silently or out loud. Like what I'm, getting 12 chicken breasts ready to cook. I'm thinking like all 12 of these fuckers are going down. They have no chance. This is my chicken for the week. Yeah, yeah. If I do this, you know, I'm just trying to get check in to check in with Dom because I know he's going to push the food because that's the talk we had. It's like, yeah, do I want, that's another, do I want to tell my coach like, Hey, I can't get the food. No, <laughs> I would rather jump off a bridge than have to say that to someone. So right. I'll figure it out there. It, we talk about genetics a lot in bodybuilding. It, there's no genetic talent required to get your food in. Zero. Some people have higher appetites than other, but that's not a genetic. Tr that's it is what it is. Like you either, if you do congrats, you probably have a harder time prepping. Uh, if you have a huge appetite, cause you're going to be hungry pretty much. I love it. Like prep is my time, but off seasons yeah. where I got to work, other yeah. people might have a different scenario. You just have to take your hand, find a way to win with it. And it just, at the end of the day, it's just, this food is going to make me better. I mean, if nothing else, like if you don't, if you don't need to get like dark and tell yourself crazy things, it should just be as easy as that. Like, do I want to get better as bad as I tell other people? Like when other people ask you about your bodybuilding and what your goals are, like be that person that you tell other people that you are. Think about if you don't eat the food, you wasted a good, if you had a good training session that day, you wasted it by not eating your food yep. or your the money you're spending on gear and growth hormone. You're wasting if you're wasting. not eating. That's, yep. That could, that could help people. Cause it's like, man, yep. that's, I don't like, I don't like wasting money. Yeah. Yeah. With that said, I'm going to go force down another meal. So. Yes, sir.
All right, guys. As always, thanks for listening. Thanks to the gentleman that submitted uh, physiques. For anybody that did submit a physique and that we didn't get to, we're going to string them along. We're going to get to everybody. Anybody that emailed, posted one in the Facebook group, whatever, we're going to get to everybody at some point. Uh, but we just didn't want the segment to to run too long. And we didn't want to like blow through all the submissions in one episode. So uh, thanks to everybody that submitted. Thanks to everybody that listens, comments, all that stuff. And until next time, guys, we are out. <laughs>